Hello, welcome to ArchLine XP 2022 Intermediate Course. The Intermediate Course will consist of eight lectures, and the first lecture will be Material Management. Let's get started. I open the program, then click on Open Project and select Workshop Start File. I will work in this project. I will create material from color, texture, and I will also download different materials from the internet and from the showroom. Let's start by creating a new material from color. I can do this by selecting Materials menu from the Design Center, clicking on the cogwheel icon and choosing Create New Material. Under Texture Color Properties, I click on the current color. In the pop-up window, I can choose from different color charts or create custom color based on RGB components. I'm going to choose the RAW color chart and search for the RAW 7031 blue-gray color. Here it is. Here I can set the different properties of the material, but for this example I will not change them. I will only adjust the render style, as I know that I will use the new material as a wall color. I will adjust the albedo a bit, then name it. It will be RAW 7031. I save it to the library, to the category of colors, to the RAW subcategory. The material is placed in the selected folder and I can simply drag it onto the 3D model. To do this, I switch views. I drag it onto the wall on the left side of the sofa. I place it on the wall as painting. Now I will download the material from the showroom and apply it to the curtains. I'm going to go back to the home page of the Design Center and click on the showroom. In the showroom we can find 3D models and materials from various manufacturers. I will choose Robitex Home Deco and within this I will download the Denver A304 material. I click on the download button. The program will show us the name and the location of the newly saved material. It will be under the category Fabrics and within that the subcategory Curtains. In this case, I don't even have to search the library. The program loads it immediately and I can change the curtain material with the replacing one material with another on this object command. I right click on the curtain and select the Find Material command so I can look at the material properties. Scrolling down, I see that the transparency is set to 13%, but since this is a blackout curtain, I set it to 0%. It changed immediately. Now I will also create a new material, but this time from Texture. I will download it from the JAB's website. I'm going to open the JAB website and look for Casolo wallpaper. I choose the material. Let's look at its properties. Pay attention to the length of the repeat value on the web page. This will be the width of our pattern, 700 mm. I scroll down and choose the image of pattern repeat folder type and the office format, which is 900 pixel. It is not recommended to choose a too large resolution because it only will increase the project size. Clicking on the download button will display the image. I then have two options. One is to save it to the computer, the other is to copy it to the clipboard. From the clipboard, I can insert it directly into the program. This is the method to choose if the image does not need to be edited. Since this is a seamless pattern, I choose to copy. I go back to the program and under Design Center Materials, I choose to create a new material. Clicking on the texture, then paste command will display the material. I set the render style, which will be a wall since I'm applying the material as wallpaper. I adjust the albedo. I need to specify the width of the seamless pattern, which is 700 mm. I'm going to specify this while turning on the Keep Aspect Ratio option. This will change the height and the width values proportionally. When I'm done with that, I'll name it. Let it be JAB Casolo. And I save it to the wallpaper other category. It is in the materials library. 
I drag it onto the wall behind the couch and place it with the S painting option. The next topic we will deal with is the setting of the material properties. To do this, I'll switch views. Let's look at the properties of the glass table. I right click on it and select the material search. The material appears in the side menu. We see that it currently has a glass render style with a transparency of 80% and a reflectance of 10%. I'll drag a matte render style on it. I can do this in the design center under the render styles. Here I can choose from several options. I drag a matte style to the table. Let's also look at its properties by finding the material. We can see that it is no longer transparent and it is not reflective. Let's see how it works with mirror style and with frosted glass style. Let's continue with how we can edit a pattern downloaded from the internet that is not a seamless pattern. But first, let's discuss what a seamless pattern is. A continuous, endless pattern that shows no square-like repetition in either direction. A pattern is actually a small image that when repeated one after the other in each direction forms a seamless pattern and you can fill the available space with it as long as you repeat it. Because the pattern is repeatable, you don't see the image being interrupted anywhere. We can only create a seamless pattern from material that contains the full repetition period, such as that we downloaded from JAB website. I open the intermediate course texture folder. I will use this dandelion pattern. I drag and drop it on the floor plan. I left click on the image, then select Save as material from the local menu. I save it to the wallpaper or the subcategory and change its properties. The width is 700 mm. I accept the settings and switch to the 3D window. I look for the material. Here it is. I drop it on the wall behind the sofa with the painting option. To see it better, I set the consistent color mode. We can see the aforementioned square repetition on the wallpaper. So, this is not a seamless pattern. But thanks to the program, we can turn it into one. Let's go back to the plan view and see how we can edit a seamless pattern. I click on the image and choose Edit. Make a seamless pattern from the local menu. By clicking on one of the sides of the pattern, the program completes it into 3x3 three three pattern. Move the cursor till the pattern is overlapping. I repeat it with the other side, then press Enter. The seamless pattern is ready. I save it as a material in the wallpaper Others category. Let it be called Dandelion Seamless. In the pop-up menu I activate the main aspect ratio option and set the width to 700 mm. I activate the 3D view and select the material I just saved from the library. I drop it on the wall as coloring. This is now a seamless pattern, square-like repetition. But what if we find some material on the internet that doesn't contain this repetition period? And we can't use this seamless pattern command I just showed you. Let's activate the floor plan view and from the texture folder I now select the abstract 2 image and drag it onto the floor plan. After placement I select edit make seamless pattern quad option from the local menu. In this case the program will mirror the pattern in both x and y axis direction resulting a repeating pattern. It looks like this. I also save it to the wallpaper category as a material. Then I switch to 3D view and drag it from the design center onto the wall. This created a very interesting pattern. Let's look at a useful option in the program, which is to set a background color for the materials. To do this, I'll undo the last step to see the previous wallpaper. I right click on the wall and select the Find Material option. 
On the left side, in the Material Properties, there is an option to add color. If I activate this and click on it, I can select any color. This material should have a pastel yellow background color. And we can see that we've changed the wallpaper on the model in one go. The advantage of this is that, that we can see the change immediately. So we can try various colors. The Adding Color option does not color the texture, but the material itself. So we can actually turn this off at any time if we don't want a background color. There is also the option to color the texture. Let's see how. I'm going to activate the floor plan view and find the dandelion seamless material in the design center. I place it as a raster image next to the other one in the floor plan. And then make a copy of them to try out more colors. Let's see how we can add color to the texture. I click on the first image, then from the local menu I choose Edit, Recoloring Image. The program notes that this function will add a color correction to each pixel of the image and that we should choose a color. Here I choose a light gray. Now the next picture. For this one I choose orange. The third will be red and the last green. In order to use them, I have to save them to the library as well. I click on the orange one, then the local menu, save as material. Let this be color 1. I save the red one as color 2 and the green one as color 3. Let's go to the 3D and replace the wallpaper with the Color 1 version. I use the Find Material command to view its properties in the side menu. We can see that the color adding is not set, so this is now the color of the texture. Now I will create a material with a transparent background. I activate the floor plan view and select and place the image Abstract Wood from the Texture folder. In the local menu I choose Edit, Make a picture transparent. I need to specify which color should be transparent. I choose White. In the pop-up menu I can set the level of transparency. I accept it and then press Enter to close the command. I save the modified image as a material. I switch to the 3D window and change the view to see the wall behind the dining table. I choose Interior Properties, Picture on the Wall to set the properties of the picture. No frame will be needed and I also disable the matting. I select the image from the wallpaper, other folder, and accept the settings. With the single object, picture on the wall command, I can place the wall sticker with the transparent background on the wall. The next topic is surface roughness, which can be used to give materials three-dimensional depths, creating a more realistic effect. We call this bump mapping. During the procedure, a more uneven surface is created by freely modifying the direction of the normal vectors of the model, thus creating the illusion of a more complex uneven surface. These normal vectors are stored in a texture. These textures are called normal map. It corresponds to the RGB3 color 
of the three axes of the coordinate system so that the blue color falls on the axis pointing towards us. Therefore, normal maps are mostly bluish. Let's look at an example. I open the browser, type normal map and look at the pictures. The bump map of materials can be specified in three ways in the program. The first is automatically by the texture of the material. The second is by selecting a built-in normal map from the list or by using our own normal map texture, which we can download from the internet as I have just shown. I change view to place a brick texture on the wall between the kitchen and the living room. From the design center, building brick folder, I choose the block work and drag it onto the wall as coloring. On the Navi bar, I switch back to the realistic effect to see the changes better. Let's look at the material properties. Find material command shows it in the side menu. I'm looking for bump mapping. For materials with texture, if the scale factor is other than zero, a normal map is automatically added, creating the illusion of a 3D effect. Now let's see what this looks like. I set it to a larger value. The surface roughness must always be corrected by softness. Otherwise, a too rough effect is obtained. Specifying a surface roughness with a scale factor only makes sense on a suitable texture. On a color-based pattern, it is meaningless. Now let's try bump mapping with built-in normal map texture. Normal map texture can be used on texture-based material and on color-based material too. I change view for a better look on the sofa. I'm going to change the fabric to cold gray. I look for it in the design center and drag it onto the sofa. Then place it using the replacing one material with another option. This way, I replaced all original materials. Let's look at the properties. Scrolling down to the bump mapping, I click on the small folder icon and select the leather surface normal map. Above, instead of stretching, change the option to tile. This will show the unevenness of the leather surface. With maintaining the aspect ratio, I also adjust the width and the height to 1000 mm. This way I can change the pattern dimensions. Let's set it to 100 mm. So we get a fine patterned leather surface. If the material is applied on a non-flat surface, it is advised to turn on the Recalculate UV mapping option in the material properties. It is especially important in case of patterned materials. I click on the cogwheel icon to select the material properties and activate the recalculation of the UV mapping. If we want to use a normal mapping downloaded from the internet, we can click on the folder next to the bump mapping and in the list choose open file to browse it. The next topic will be color cards. For this, I'm going to switch views. The purpose of a color card is to make the color or texture selection on the 3D model easier without modifying the plan. With one click, we can display the living room in new colors. Let's see how we can do this. In the design center, I click on the materials and select the wallpaper folder, including the dandelion wallpaper that we have already used in the workshop. I click on it to see its properties. I click on the cogwheel icon and select create a copy as a color card. Here I can add different materials to this color card. I name the color card wallpaper and I add more textures. I use the JAB wallpaper we downloaded and the orange dandelion wallpaper. The color card icon appears in the corner of the texture. I drag it onto the wall as painting. I'm switching to consistent color mode to see the patterns. I use the find material option to display the color card 
that is used in the model. By clicking on the color card icon, I can choose which material I will use from the pop-up menu. The change will immediately appear on the 3D. Let's make a color card for the sofa as well. I do a material search to find the current material. I save a copy of this as a color card by clicking on the gear icon. Let's call it sofa. Now let's add textures. Let's have a textile, textile linen 2, and then a patterned fabric. Let it be the booster fabric. I drag the color card onto the sofa. Then select the replacing one material with another option. Clicking on the color card icon, I can change the fabric from the pop-up dialog. Now I would like to show you a very useful feature. This will be the color card manager. If we create different color cards, we can save different color card variations. Let's look at this in practice. I click on the home icon, go to the materials, in the model folder and click on the cogwheel icon. I select the color card manager. Here I can pair up the color cards variation and save them as a style. For the first variation, I select textile as the sofa fabric and the JAB wallpaper. I click on the gear icon and save it as a new style. Let it be called WS Living Room 1. The second variation should be called gray and the white dandelion wallpaper. I save this too. The last one will be the pattern fabric and the orange wallpaper variation. I save this as a living room 3. When we generate the model, we can see the last style created. I go back to the color card manager and select other variation. Let it be the first one. After regenerating, it will appear on the model. Let's take a look at the last one, Living Room 2. The last topic we cover is the new feature for 2022, the management of PBR materials in ArchLine XP. PBR materials open a new world to realism. PBR mean physically based rendering and allows us to simulate existing materials as realistic as possible under all lighting conditions. PBR materials are based on texture maps and the maps describe the most important material properties such as diffuse, glossy, reflective, metallic and so on. These materials can be accessed in two ways in ArchLine. One is from the Design Center, High Quality Materials Catalog. This contains a variety of high-quality PBR materials. These materials are marked with a diamond icon. I drag this rusty material on the wall as painting. Let's look at its properties. I scroll down. We can see that we can give a material reflection, roughness, unevenness, not only with values but also with textures. This makes these materials much more detailed and realistic than the normal materials. Another advantage is that we have access to a huge, constantly growing database of these materials. I choose Interior, Material, Download command. It takes us to the Archine XP PBR Material Collector page, where it lists where we can download such material. Let's look at Ambient CG for example. Clicking on Materials will bring up the possibilities. Here we find textures broken down into different material groups. Let's look at the wood category. I'm going to download this herringbone pattern pocket. I have several resolutions to choose from, but I recommend downloading a maximum of 2K resolution because higher ones will slow down the work. I'm choosing 1K resolution. It is saved as a zip file. I open the folder and drag the file into the Design Center. No need to unzip it. 
the material properties dialog appears where I can change any of its properties. I change the render style to pocket and make it a bit darker. We can see the change continuously in the preview. We can adjust its reflectivity, roughness, refraction, bump mapping and size just like a normal material. I save it to the library under its original name in the pocket alternating category. I can select it from the high quality materials folder or find it under recently created content. Clicking on the material will bring up the wood floor texture, so it is that easy to import PBR materials into the program. This brings us to the end of the material management workshop. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Practice your materials management skills until the next one. Have a nice day. Bye.